What's happening guys? Nate here. So you're ready to take that two handed backhand to the next level. Well, today I'm going to show you a drill, a little exercise that Andre Agassi did. One of the best two handed backhands we've ever seen in the world. And this is, we're not just talking about a souped up ball machine. Yes, I'm on a ball machine, but we're going to talk about understanding the role of both hands and how it functions. So this is what Andre did. Andre worked through lefty forehands. We've all heard that, but he also learned how to hit a one-handed backhand and he would alternate. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about and I'll talk you through what the role, what, it, what it's really making you feel and learn on the two-handed backhand. So hitting lefty forehands, what it's gonna do is help you find the role of the non-dominant hand. The non-dominant hand should be leading the stroke. The dominant hand, for me as a righty, my right hand comes in for stability. And now what I wanna focus on, as awkward as this feels, is keeping the ball in front, allowing that lag, the racket, to stay below my wrist, and really swinging up out to the desired target. So you might be thinking, if you've got a two-hander, why would you need to learn how to hit a one-hander? Well, Andre did this to help him control the side of his body. When we hit a one-hander, we often see that Federer finish and this anchors that left side. Well, it's important on the two-hander as well that we don't over-rotate and we swing out and not across our body. A lot of times on two-handers, we have the tendency to work across. The one-hander keeps a path on the side of the body and out to the target. So when we hit the two-hander, it becomes much, much easier to get that racket out. So here hitting the two-handed backhand, incorporating the feel from the one-hander and the lefty forehands, the focus here is really starting with the racket above the wrist, staying loose with that left hand so that it can fall, it can lag, and then the slot is working out to the ball. This is important because we really wanna stay relaxed. A lot of two-handers tend to muscle the ball and we want this racket falling and working up to the ball with loose hands. The second thing is because of the one-hander, what you'll see here is that I'm really swinging out in front and keeping that racket on the side of my body and not swinging across, really letting the racket follow out to extension to its target. And when my arms simply run out of room, the elbows, <laughs> the elbows will hinge and bring the racket up to the follow through. To make sure you have a good follow through, you should be showing your opponent, your bicep, or the side fence, depending how much rotation you're getting. So this one was a lot of fun. Andre was definitely one of my childhood heroes, but if you're looking to hit that two-handed backhand more like Andre, get out there and try these two exercises. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you struggling with it? What made sense when you went back to the two-hander? And if you enjoyed today's video, you know the drill, hit that like button. Most importantly, hit subscribe because that's what helps our business the most. And be sure to check out in the comment section. That first comment is a link for our two-handed backhand mastery class absolutely for free. Just our thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.